Hello, welcome to the Quakes Motel. My name's Conan. In a follow-up to a previous video on the new plugin for the MPC standalone, Flytape 2, we are now going to look at Flytape 2 as a VST3 VST plugin in your door. Let's jump in. So before we get into this, I just want to point out, I bought this with my own money because I couldn't find a demo of the VST version. I'm not affiliated with Akai or MSX2, the makers of the plugin in any way. I just want to point that out so that you guys are aware of the fact that I paid for it and that it's an honest review. I'm going to be looking at it today in the MPC beta software. That's right, it's still in beta. Really, I just want to show you, I'm not going to be concentrating on all the functions of it. I've covered that in a previous video. I just wanted to show that it does actually work okay in your door. I tried it in Studio One, works fine. I tried it in Ableton, works fine. And that's going to be good for some people because people use Ableton as a kind of performance-based door. And it also works in the MPC beta software, which I'm going to show in a second. Now, my previous review was a review on what the plugin could do, the, the separate options in the plugin, the fact that it was a multi effects plugin and I did point out on several occasions that it was a performance based plugin and it is a performance based plugin. However, I do still think that it's important that the plugin sounds good because for me personally, in my opinion, I should get a t-shirt with that written on it, shouldn't I? It doesn't matter if a plugin has got a ton of bells and whistles. If it doesn't sound any good, then me personally, in my opinion, I'm not going to be using it. So I think it's important to point out how a plugin sounds. And my reviews tend to be based around how a plugin sounds. Now, the reason why I'm saying this and I'm making a point of saying this is because I had seen several comments from the maker of the plugin on several people's YouTube videos that too many people were focusing on the cassette functions in the plugin and how it sounded. And it was a performance-based plugin and people should be concentrating on that. That's a fair point, but it's still got to sound good, right? If you want to see the plugin used in a performance-based style, SP404 replacement style, then check out Malo Beats. He's made a fantastic video on it, using it as a performance-based style plugin, because that's the kind of thing that he does. Bolo has also gone into it a lot more, so check out his video as well. I will link both of those videos below. If you're into it, if you're into the idea of it replacing the SP404, then definitely watch Malo Beats because he uses the SP404 a lot and he's really enthusiastic about it and he, and he really, really shows it in a, he really concentrates on it being a performance-based plugin. So if you want to see that style of video, check it out because his video, it, it's, it's the best one I've seen on it being used as a performance-based plugin. But my videos tend to be on the sound. So we're going to look at it in the MPC beta software and I'll just run through it to show that it works okay and that it shows up in your MPC, all that kind of stuff. I then want to focus on a few things in Plugin Doctor. The reason why I paid for it with my own money as a VST was because I wanted to be able to show it in Plugin Doctor because in my previous video, I did point out that there, there seemed to be perhaps a little bit of aliasing. I didn't focus on it too much because I didn't want to really pick it apart in terms of its sound quality because I didn't really have any way of proving what I was hearing. And again, I don't want to go, I don't want to be too anal about it, but I do think that it's important. I do think it's important that a plugin is coded correctly and that there aren't issues with the sound quality, especially if you're going to be using it in a mix, in your actual track, in the studio. So I am going to be running it through Plugin Doctor because I just want to point out a few of my concerns. So I'll grab my headphones. I'll try not to smash things up too much badly with all the cables running everywhere. So jumping into the software, we can see that the plugin is open. We can see on the MPC that if you click on the plugin, you have all the functions in your MPC as well. So you can use it in your MPC in the controller option and it all works absolutely fine. So we've just got a beat running there. Uh, I've got hold activated. So I'll just run through it quickly to show that it works okay.
So as you can see, everything works as it's supposed to, and you can automate all of this obviously in your door. It's a lot easier to do it in the, I wouldn't say it's easier, there's just, there's a few more options, I guess, especially in things like Studio One in Ableton, not so much in the beta software, but hopefully that's coming. If you want more information about the actual automation using it as a performance-based plugin in your MPC, using the Q-Links, etc., again, I say, please watch the Melo Beats video because he points it out and he shows exactly how to do it, etc. And it's really, really cool. Now, I've got it on my main output here as well. So I just wanted to show a few issues that I have with the plugin because I feel that it's my duty to point these out. Now, I did actually point this out in my previous video that if for instance speed mute reverse break or stutter is better to leave the plugin in 100 percent mix but if you're using saturation lo-fi or warble then you can use the mix to dial in the amount that you want especially on something like saturation for instance so let's just hit play So obviously you can dial that in, which is what the mix failure is there for. However, there is a few issues with this. If you, for instance, were to use saturation and warble at the same time, but you want to dial in how much you've got, it introduces phasing and that's an issue. You also get it if you have lo-fi with saturation, but it's not as obvious, but I can hear it phasing. It kind of introduces this weird kind of hollow type sound. So that is an issue. It shouldn't really do that. When you use a mix knob, you shouldn't introduce any phasing. You still want it to be clean. It just means that there's been a bit of an issue with the coding. Perhaps they'll sort that out in an update. Hopefully they will, because it would be nice, for instance, especially with saturation and lo-fi, to be able to use the mix knob, mix fader, and not introduce any phasing or any of that kind of weird hollow sound, because, you know, you don't want to do that. Now, they could argue, well, you're not supposed to use the mix knob like that. In fact, don't use the mix knob at all. But if that's the case, then don't have a mix knob on there. Because I can tell you this, from my experience of using an MPC in a live situation, it's been a long time, I'm going to have to admit. But if I was still doing that and I was playing on a massive sound system in a nightclub or in a venue, that phase is going to be a big issue for the speakers, especially the low end. It's going to cause all manner of weird sounds and possibly damage. So that's not good, especially as it's supposed to be a performance-based plugin. So the next thing I wanted to do was to run the plugin through Plugin Doctor to see if those aliasing issues, which I was hearing, do actually exist. And unfortunately, they do. So without going into too much detail, because there are people online that will be able to explain Nyquist and aliasing and cramping, etc. in a lot more detail than I can. Just to kind of summarize, I'm showing you a harmonic analysis of saturation being activated in the Flytape 2 plugin. So these large ones here that are poking up, you can see here, they are basically the harmonics that are being introduced, which is what saturation plugins do. However, this stuff here, and some of these parts around these harmonics, they shouldn't be there and they are aliasing and that shouldn't be happening. Now, this is at 44.1, which is what most of us are gonna be running this plugin at, if we were running it in our MPC, obviously. Obviously, in a door, you can run it at 48, and if I turn to 48, you can see that things start not looking so bad. You haven't got as much mush down here or issues down here. Let's just go back to that again. You can see this, this is a big issue down here, this. 48, it cleans up, and then if you go all the way to 96, you're getting what you're supposed to get. There's, there's still some issues around here, though, for me. These. They shouldn't be there. Now... There's probably going to be some people that are immediately going to point out that I'm full of shit. 
you can't hear it and all that kind of stuff. And that's absolutely fine. If you're happy with, with it, then that's absolutely fine. I just feel that it's my duty to point these things out. Now, with things like the warble, there is some odd stuff going on there as well. This, this is, uh, without comparing it to other plugins that also do warble, it's a bit difficult to really categorically say that there's issues going on here, but there are a few little issues. Lo-fi doesn't look too bad to me. Um, and I did actually talk about this roll off in um, my previous video and that I do actually really, really like the lo-fi sound on there, especially five and six. They're quite funky, uh, but you can see what it's doing there. But, you know, I wouldn't really say there's too many issues with that, but this was a problem for me, especially in 44.1. So there you have it, VST3, Fly Tape 2, it all works, all good. I tested it in Studio One, Ableton and MPC3, didn't have any issues with it, no crashing, it did exactly what it was supposed to do. I tried some automation on it, that all works okay, I didn't show that in my video, sorry about that. And I did put to bed a few of the issues that I thought were going on that I couldn't test previously in the MPC standalone. And, you know... I will say this, the, the small issues that there are, for instance, with aliasing, they could be sorted out. They can be sorted out in an update if MSX want to do that. Maybe they don't think it's very important. Maybe you don't think it's very important. However, I just felt that I should point out those things. Do you know what? The other day, somebody called me pedantic for pointing out that the visual reference in the multibank filter, is it called multibank filter? In the MPC. People are saying that you can use it as a visual, e visual EQ. And I pointed out in a video that the visual, the visualization of the frequencies is completely inaccurate. Somebody called me pedantic for pointing that out. Me personally, and I really do think I should get a t-shirt with me personally, in my opinion, written on it. I don't think it's pedantic if you point, point out an issue in a plugin rather than bury your head in the sand and go, oh, la, 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 it's a great visual EQ. So I don't think I'm being pedantic. And I don't think I'm being pedantic. This is what I was getting onto by pointing out that there are some cramping and some aliasing issues in Flytape 2. So thanks for watching. This is the Quakes Motel. My name's Conan. Till next time.